Hey folks, how's it going? I'm Josh. I'm Taylor. We'll be checking out what, my dear? The Ricky Gervais Show. And what season is it? Um, oh, season three, episode eight. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Tay's been gone for too long. She's been mm-hmm. boozing. I know. We got her off the booze. I know. She's I back on the show. She began, she's been getting that. tore up. No, so I guys, haven't. that's why we need you guys' help on Patreon. Tay is a goddamn blumber and alcoholic, and I don't know what to do with myself. If she don't fix don't it. Don't tell people <laughs> that. That's not true. I've been working. Oh, shit. Oh. Uh, cool. I'm just kidding. Our schedules just haven't been meshing up with her work, my work, all that jazz. So, we made time. Because Tay missed you guys. Mm-hmm. And I missed her on the show. I missed my baby. Oh. So, guys, we're going to be checking this out. Continue to leave your comments below, folks. That helps out a lot. Then also, I have, what do you call it? We have Daily Motion. Make sure you guys um, click on that link to Daily Motion, subscribe to there, because anything that gets blocked on YouTube, we're going to be put on Daily Motion. All right? So let's jump into it. I think it's probably best, uh, Rick, if we return to the very beginning of time, the dawn of man, because, of course, uh, even in primitive, prehistoric ages, medicine was practiced in some ways from the uh, research people have done, cave paintings and the like. Uh, Carl, I wonder if you would just give us your initial thoughts on, um, you know, the uh, the medicine of the ancient world. Uh... You, you're not, you sound like you're, if you, you haven't studied it or... Or you being... Are you being modest? Are you being modest? I've never, never you... really thought about it. I know that, um Tutankhamun, he, uh Tutankhamun? He, he died of, like, a, having a knee injury. So they didn't have that much medicine knocking about back then. Right, where do you get this information from? It sounds vague. He came off a chariot. The dangerous things. <laughs> he came off a chariot? <laughs> Honestly, he's, you're going to make yourself look daft here, because that's what happened. <laughs> Imagine that. In a room with Carl Pilkington, we make ourselves look so dark. Dumb. I would be after, uh, that would be incredible. <laughs> Shall we move on to um, I love it, the ancient world things. in terms of Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, of course, because they made huge advances, particularly the Romans, who understood, of course, the importance of sanitation. You know, famously, their streets were clean. Yeah. Don't you think that if we hadn't have cleaned up as much, that, I don't know, we'd be stronger? What? Uh, well, they, well, I know what you mean. What? Yeah, they, they, they say, they, no, they don't say, they say, they say let your kids eat dirt. Eat yeah, of course. Well, that's exactly what um, uh, immunisation is, giving you a bit Yeah, but of it's gone disease. mental now. Whenever a baby's born, he's drugged out of his eyeballs. It's only about a week old. They're giving all sorts of shots. Like what? Loads of stuff. Stuff for whooping cough. Yeah, you uh, don't want oops and cough. Tootin' car moon could have died of whooping cough. No, but, but they give it, give, it, give it loads of stuff. And uh, now it's like, he, I don't know, it's making us weak. There's this big thing, you know, like the superbug, where people took half the course of antibiotics. It was almost like an immunisation to the bacteria and virus against yeah. the antibiotics. That's what I mean. So, yeah, we need some germs, as you'd call them. But there are some that we have eradicated. I mean, I think it was uh, in our lifetime that they eradicated smallpox from the world. There are rumours, of course, uh, that both Russia and America still have the smallpox virus under lock and key, which they could theoretically breed and use in a chemical warfare situation. Well, there was a bit of a scandal a few years <laughs> ago, I think ten years ago, where in a, a university laboratory, someone came across a marked yogurt pot in deep freeze that had smallpox in it. When you say it was marked, was it like someone's put their name on it because they don't want someone to, uh, to eat no, their no, smallpox no, yogurt? I, I think they, they, you know, they looked into it and it was the deep frozen smallpox virus. What I mean is, it's under lock and key or, or, or frozen at minus well, that's 200 degrees enough, centigrade. Why? Under lock and key and all that. It's, it's, it's not good enough. Get rid of it. Why are they keeping a little tub of smallpox knocking about? Well, are they not? Are they not meant to be? Well, well that's a lesson. What are you doing there in the first place? That's To me, that's like in James Bond, where they don't kill him when they have the chance. He's always that little thing of, you know, play with danger. Let's keep a bit. Yeah, well, I'll it's probably... next to AIDS in the Kiara bottle. <laughs> you know, I don't understand why you'd, why, you'd, why you'd store that. Well, there's probably a presumption. It's probably an overhang from the uh, Cold War, where people were thinking, well, listen, what if Russia's still got some smallpox? We better hang on to some smallpox. It's just yeah. clutter, though, as well, isn't it? You see, we're obsessed. We're keeping stuff. And it's the same with germs. We can't even say, get rid of that. We won't be needing it. Smallpox. We'll keep it just in case. Get rid of it. <laughs> I, we've got this obsession thing again, it's saving everything. You say that, but of course, famously Alexander Fleming discovered uh, what may be the most important breakthrough um, of the 20th century. 
which was the first antibiotic, I think, in 1928. And he discovered that because he uh, left a bit of old bread out for a while and it went all mouldy in his kitchen. And he thought, oh, what's that? Oh, let's have a look. It's, it, it, like I've said to you before, it's, it's down to him being scruffy more than anything. Well, not, it just seems like there's a lot of scruffy kitchens around. But think if his cleaner had come in and gone, Oh, Mr Fleming, oh, you, oh, you, you disgust me, you fucking filthy scruffy cunt. I'm gonna <laughs> throw all this bread away. He's gonna go, um, uh, Maud, what did you do with that, um, old bread I left out? It had gone green, sir, so I chucked it away. Oh, Maud, you dopey fucking slut. <laughs> You just caused millions and millions of people to die. Keep out of my fucking kitchen. I know, but, but don't put it there. It's the same way smallpox is in, in a yogurt pot. It's a yog in a yogurt pot. Wow. You're asking for trouble. But what if Maud had come in and thrown that away? Again? He couldn't. He couldn't shout at her. She's doing a job. I'd be annoyed if it was still there. Yeah. You just don't put like yogurt pots with smallpox in the fridge. Yeah, I mean, but that's you, a starter. Yeah, but you were saying earlier. Um, oh, let's let babies eat mud, don't inject them. Yeah. But let them crawl around a dirty floor, I clean did, up the floor and no one will die. I did say that, but we've gone too far now. Babies are coming out mad. Oh. You can't handle anything now. Oh, they've got a runny nose, they're coming out all mardy. All get mardy? Ill. Yeah, they get ill easy. Because they're not tough babies anymore. We're ending up with a load of weak people who need looking after all the time. That costs a lot of money. And they can't do anything, they're useless. Now that doesn't happen. In, in other nature. If a little weak bird is born, you see Bill Oddy saying that won't last. <laughs> he says, he says that won't last a week. And he's right. You watch it and say, oh, that, that third baby that came out, it died. And but he what's was your right. point, Carl? That modern Me medicine, point... which can help people live to the age of 75, 80, that it shouldn't be doing that? I it should just... let people just die off? Well, here's something, right? The right. estate that I grew up on, there's a woman there. Yeah. Scruffy Sandra. <laughs> 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 So descriptive. Now, she had no chance, even if she cleaned up her act. Yeah. She'd come in looking like pretty woman. You go, oh, it's scruffy. No, What's so, the point? What is the point? Oh, so so the thing is, she used to always get on these buses called dialer rides that were sort of like <laughs> posh taxis. You could call for one, it'd come round to your house. Yeah. And it would pick you up and you'd pay like 50p. But, but it would we pick up a bunch of other people as well. Yeah, yeah, on the way. So it, it would take ages oh, to get to where you're going. what a nightmare that is. No, oh, it's, it's, it's good though. It's kind of a bit of a day out. Old people used to love it because you'd right. get to see things. Right. And uh, you'd hear a call coming in on the radio that, you know, Scruffy Sandra's being picked up. Oh, God. And she'd always have loads of bin bags with her for some reason. Now the thing is, well, she sounds clean. She, no, she's stung. Well, she's <laughs> taken out the well, bin she's bags. No, she wasn't homeless. No, she used to just, uh, she just didn't bath from that. She just stunk. But the, but the weird thing is, why do they call her Stinky Sandra? She never was ill. Right. <laughs> People didn't sit next to her. Yeah. Because she stunk. Yeah. Now, because of that, anyone who might, might have had a bit of flu or a cold never sat next to Scruffy Sandra. Right. Because she stunk. But that was good. That was like a protection thing for her. Because she knew <laughs> that because she stunk, yeah, no one wants to sit next to her. She wouldn't pick up the... the germ. Right. No, but this is quite... Your point is, in order to fend off illness, you have to not bathe. And so you stink. So you're saying that it wasn't that she'd built up an immunity, it was that she stank so much that flu wouldn't come near her. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a specific you. example. It's, it's not applicable in any other scenario. There's always colds, there's always flu. It's whether your immunity is, is good or bad. That's interesting, isn't it, that um, more sort of colds are spread through shaking hands than people, you know, just taking in the air. That's why some sort of germaphobes don't even shake hands anymore. Yeah, well, that's going too far, because they're going to die or something. You can't be that paranoid. You've got to get on with your life. <laughs> Loneliness. And it's good to feel ill, because when you feel better, you appreciate how good doesn't you feel. Doesn't make any sense at all. No. It's good to feel ill. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all. Well, it does afterwards. The other weekend, when I was ill, I don't know what was up with me, but I got, I got something. Symptoms? Uh, went to the toilet a lot, felt sick at the same time, got a sweat on, uh, felt weak, had the shakes. Um, Just a bug, yeah. Lasted, lasted probably... About 24 hours. After that 24 hours, you go, oh, I feel good again. It's nice to feel good again. And it makes you appreciate how good you feel. Now, sometimes I don't know if I feel well. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't make any sense at all either. What you... do you mean, sometimes you don't know whether you feel because well? I, because I've been in my body for years. <laughs> Here he goes again. Go on, yeah. Here he goes again. Now, the two minds. If there was, a, if there was some sort of kit 
that the doctor said, how are you feeling, Mr. Pilkington? And I go, oh, I think I feel all right. And they go, well, do you? Yeah, I don't know. And they go, well, step into the machine, right? Get into the machine, and if he could somehow transfer my feeling into his body so I could feel how he feels, and then he can feel how I feel, and he'll go, <laughs> oh, you're not well at all. Your heart beats irregular for a start. You're a maniac. This is... <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Because you're, why cause you, you just accept that if you feel well, you know... Because uh, you don't know if you feel well. Hang on, let's well. get this machine built. Sorry, why are people bothering studying AIDS? We've got to get this machine built. Listen, this machine could do a lot of good if they could do it. Why? Because some people... You hear about people who go, Oh, I think I've got a bit of wind. Before you know it, they drop down dead. Right? Because they didn't know. They just... Well... Didn't, didn't Mr. Uh, Mr. Jones have, have a sweat on Mrs. Jones before? Oh yeah, he did, but he always had a sweat on. Well, didn't it bother him? No, he was used to it. it happened for years. Why didn't you come in? Oh, so, and what would the right. machine do again? The machine would make my doctor yep. feel like me. So, so too Mr. Many Jones people. went to the doctor and said, "Oh, I've got a sweat on." Right. Uh, right. So he'd go, mm, "Well, I tell you what, get in the machine." So Mr. Jones gets in the machine. Yeah. The doctor hits the button. Mr. Jones gets into the doctor. The doctor right. goes, yeah, I've got a sweat on. I'm familiar with this because I had a fella in the other day with a similar thing. Take three of these. You are a mental case. <laughs> I, don't know what that, I don't know what this is. Because but why can't the doctor is, make that observation like a doctor yeah. does? Why what can't the doctor, this? using his knowledge, observe the person with a sweat why. on? I tell this you is why. like a scene from Ghost. This is like <laughs> Patrick Swayze. Listen, when the nerves were short. <laughs> are they not short already? Have they extended since then? Well, I just have to do stretches. And it's pull them, it's pull them about. <laughs> right. But when I, when I add that, I'm not very good with words. Go on. So when I was going in saying, Doctor, my knee's aching, uh, and he'd go, what sort of ache is it? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I've, I've, it's just an ache. A toothache. It's, it's like a toothache in my no, leg. No, but it's different. Go it's on. a different ache. Now the thing arse is, ache. it's like an arse ache. It's hard to explain <laughs> an ache. So he'd yeah. have to feel the ache, and then he could make an assumption. Probably. Thank you. So he would presumably go through training, going in the machine, and they'd bring in various sick people, and he would experience and feel every single ailment. Great. Yeah, but over. Doctor, I'm gonna let you know now what a swift kick in the bollocks feels like, just in case you ever have to diagnose that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but Doctor, now you're going to feel a spike up the arse. It's all about... <laughs> <it's> <laughs> oh, <I'm sorry. laughs> okay. No, Doctor. couldn't I just wait until the man comes in with a spike up the arse? No, no, we've got to tell you so you know <laughs> when I you feel I it. I could assess it if he's no, coming no, he's no, got no, a spike no, up his no, arse, no. I'd be able to tell. You've got to experience everything before someone comes in and gets into your body, like ghost, and you'll know what it is. Hey, listen, let's not, let's not dismiss this idea out of hand, of course, because you'll famously remember, uh, Rick, that Carl had the idea of a man who can grow backwards. So he's born as an old man, and when he dies, he's a young baby. And with all ideas comes something. Einstein said that. He said if, a, if an idea isn't... Go on, uh, wait, 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 just let him finish. Say. We've got an Einstein quote here. Yeah. This is a historic day. Um, Carl, sorry, what were you saying? What did, what did, uh, what did uh, Albert Einstein say? He just said something along the lines of... Well, no, 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 give us the quote. It doesn't matter about no, no, how, no, no, how no. we worded it, it's no. the point in hand. Well, I think it is, I think a quote, I think like all, uh, you know, any, any sort of uh, uh, poetic content of anything is exactly how it's, how it's worded. So just, what, what did Einstein it's say not exactly? Well, it's not well, is he? well he, he said <laughs> something along the lines of... Go on. Uh, <laughs> An idea. If an idea isn't daft... Oh, start again, start again. No, come on, let's hear it. No, because he started... He, 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 he said, if an idea isn't daft, it isn't worth thinking about. What? <laughs> Say that again? If an idea isn't daft, it isn't worth thinking about. I can't imagine him saying daft. No, I can't. Okay. No, well, it was something like that, though, meaning that... Mm. ...every new idea seems a bit mental. Yeah. Right? That's a good point. But then it leads to something. Mm. Well, I'm not well, sure that he, no, but no. I think if we were sat with Einstein now and you'd brought up the machine that allows doctors to feel, I don't think he'd be saying we should no. pursue that idea. There's some ideas that go that, that I think the earth might be round. People go, oh, it is flat. And then there's people who stand in doorways covered in crucifixes with um, tinfoil on their head saying, Jesus is in my cock. Yeah. <laughs> now, he's a mentalist. Yes, but what I'm saying is, wouldn't you have said it was mental years ago when someone said, I'm going to make a machine so I can look inside your head? Years on. Hello. Get in the machine. We've got an MRI. Eye scanner. <laughs> um, you may obviously be aware, Carl, that the first contraceptive diaphragms centuries ago were uh, citrus rinds. Half an orange rind, for instance, would be would be used. I mean, more selfish men turned them inside out.
I believe that's uh, also still being used in parts of Manchester. Ah, <laughs> uh, for what? An orange. Just think of your head. <laughs> and it worked. Well, we don't know oh, uh, at this juncture. I mean, maybe. I don't it works for contraception because women went. Fuck off! What are you going to do with a fucking orange on your cock for? You don't can. <laughs> but it could. It, I mean, again, it's that thing in it of we look. We look at it now and we laugh. But look, look at what's happening. People mm. now are always trying to get us to eat more fruit. <laughs> that's amazing. That's, that's a way of getting... I thought for a minute he was going to say, okay, so they start with... Then they went from the, the orange rind to, say, a coconut shell. Yeah. That was too big. That didn't work. Yeah. Run! Here yeah. comes Coconut John! No, don't put <laughs> a pineapple on your cock. That's insane. Yeah, no, that's no, mental. And then somewhere down the line, they finally got to contraception, as we understand it. Is that? I thought that's where you're going, but no. no something no. about eating oranges is healthy no, for what, you. what I'm saying is, if you go into any well-known supermarket and you look at, say, some young kid who's had a kid, and you look at stuff in their shopping basket, yeah. they're not buying fruit. They're buying, you know, burgers and chips. Turkey Twizzlers, yeah, crisps. crisps and all that. Now, but they love having it away. <laughs> Get some fruit in. So they definitely have fruit in the house, which at the moment, a lot of kids don't have fruit in their house. That's why they're eating Turkey Twizzlers. But the mum loves having it away. So she would have loads of fruit in. So, so everyone's was, happy. If the she kids was are using an fruit. orange for contraception, she would she would also be giving the kids. Uh, well, you so half it. the orange she'd give to the kids, and half the orange she'd well, stick up a penny. Yeah, a treat for everyone. <laughs> have a bit of fruit, and you, she's got what she wants. Whereas at the moment, what happens? Oh, shit. oh my god. A burger's not coming in helpful for anyone. <laughs> oh, if you want me tonight, pop a sesame seed bone on your cock. <laughs> Take out the fucking pickle. No one likes the fucking pickle of the family. <laughs> oh, 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 he's a bloody romantic. Oh, he, oh, he, popped a, he popped a plum roast sausage at me fanny yesterday. He loves me. Oh, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> fucking stupid. Modern man, in a sense, with all the technology we have, can play God. And this is something which is huge now. A lot of yeah. ethical discussions about things like stem cell research. Should we be interfering nope. in what should be a godly <laughs> terrain? Like, no. You say no straight away. Straight away, no. I think, uh He's sort of like messing about now. I think that's the problem. We've got the tools and they like to use them. And that's what happens. I've got a sander uh, for Christmas and I, I, I can't wait to sand stuff. I can't even think of enough things that need sanding that I want to use it. And that's, that's the same. Sander. And that's the problem, isn't it? If you've got the tools, you can't have the tools and say, pop them in the shed. Well, no, I don't want to use them. A new tool, eh? Right, well, sand the shed, then. That's the problem, isn't it? All these, all these, you know, medical people. Mm. Um, that's what happened in the Hulk, isn't it? Yeah, it would. Again, that's. I just want to say that is a work of fiction, the Hulk. Yeah, but with all fiction comes the future. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, so, certainly uh, in science fiction. <laughs> but the problem is, this is what I say is the problem. Go on, now. This is a. You, is you, it a quote from someone? Let's let's sum it up there. Carl, shoot me. People are living too long. <laughs> No, that's not a summary yet. Summary. Right, I have one right, more go. So this is this is the real one. Yeah, uh, it'll be something like uh, mm. today's cure is tomorrow's headache. It's all right. That's all right. Because what I'm saying there is, go on. We can come up with with stuff. Mm. We can come up with a tablet to get rid of headache. Mm. Tomorrow, your headache's gone. Your legs hurt. So today's <laughs> cure is actually tomorrow's leg ache. So today's cure is tomorrow's leg ache. Yeah, but ages ago I Go said on. to you, don't solve problems. Yeah. Because a problem solved is a problem caused. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that quote. <laughs> Medicine is the art or science of healing. And that doesn't always have to be um, a, a drug or a surgery. Uh, we mustn't just forget that um, some people don't need medicine, they just need help. Um, for example, uh, there are people that help disabled people um, have intercourse. There's someone that actually helps the man put in his penis um, to the, uh, the woman's um, vagina. They leave the room. What? I've never seen, I've never even heard of this. It's true. Why they Absolutely about true. This before? Help us. Yeah, no, I believe that is the case. Yeah. And that's just no. That's just as needed as anything that that, that might cure well, it's them. Not, out. It's not. That's pleasure. 
Yeah. So what are you saying? Because you can't walk or, or move, that you can't love someone and want to, to, to share that love? I'm just saying it's not a priority. Well, no, but they, 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 they're, they're going to live, they're, they're, they're healthy ap apart from their, their disability. I've met someone, they want to, you know, consummate this, this love, and someone is, um, helps them out and goes, well, I, you know, that's, that's part of my job. No, it's not part of the job. <laughs> well, it is! No <laughs> it's part of this job, because that's their job! <laughs> I've never heard anyone say I've had a right day today. Why? I've been playing with Arthur's uh, tackle all day. They don't I've play never... with Arthur's tackle, they pop Arthur's tackle in Hilda's vagina. I don't think they do. <laughs> they do! How can they enjoy that? I mean, maybe once, maybe it. once, and they'd go, that didn't work, did it? I didn't enjoy that, Hilda. No. How can they enjoy it when the nurse stood there? They don't. Do she, no, they help her in. She helps it, Arthur in, or he, might be a male nurse, pops Arthur in, goes, OK, Arthur, um, I'll, I'll see you in a few minutes. Right, goes outside. But what's the point, though, in that? Why? Because it's all about the mood and everything. He's just stuck onto a, like, like a stag beetle clinging <laughs> onto a leaf. There's no enjoyment in that. Oh, the well-known uh, stag beetle copulating with a leaf syndrome. No, no but I'm that's not saying... That's the in position in the garbage I'm no, just saying... No, he knows that, you know, he's, he's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I think it's a lovely act and someone's willing to... Wouldn't you help someone Definitely in that? Definitely not. No? What? Well, so, not. no, look, there's a guy who goes, um, uh, oh, oh, this is my wife. Um, we're both say, well, I can't, I can't, you know, can you just pop me in, Carl? Um, you're the only, you know, it, 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 you're the only person around. No, um, I don't think it's important But there enough. are people... What do you mean you don't think it's important enough? I'd be happy to go round, put the washing on for them, make the bed. Do you want a cup of tea? Yeah, I'd love one. There you go. Oh, just before you go, forget it. <laughs> If they asked me to do that, I would I'd, I'd quit. And I, think it, I don't think it happens because people it wouldn't does take happen. it on for a job. You it never does. hear about it. On Comic yes. Relief, when they're raising money, they don't go, thanks to Midland Bank for this hundred grand. That's going to go towards Arthur getting his end away. That's no. ridiculous. So you, you, would, you would rather them not have the pleasure of each other than just help them in? No, because they'd, they'd work out some way that they could do something for each other. I, I want to play the guitar. My fingers aren't long enough. I've knocked it on the head. It's the same thing. If you can't do it, don't do it. So you tell me, right? Okay. Um, if the, supposing there's a, li a little fellow who's got no arms, no legs, right? Mm. Little Bob. Okay. There he is. All right, Carl. All right. Um, he's got a friend, another little fella, with no arms and no legs. All right, Carl. Right? They love each other. Two little, two little fellas. Two, two little dwarves with no arms and no legs. Okay. Lovely little fellas. They get married. Okay. Look, Carl, you can't you can't put my uh, my penis up my um my boyfriend's bottom, can you? No, you I can't. No. Why, why not? Why no, not? Do you need can't... anything else doing? Uh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah, no, it's weird them. how you can manage everything else. Well, no, I'm here to help you. Everything else seems to be sorted. Well, just... Why do you need help in this department? Well, because you're doing it, and I'm here. Just... If you just pop me in and just no, I'm not doing that. It's not good for you. You've lost your arms and legs. You'll be losing that soon if you carry on sticking it up there. <laughs> I remember <laughs> when people first told us to check out this show, that was one of the first clips somebody yeah, sent us. Yeah, I was going to say we've seen some of that. And there was like this, people were saying, don't watch this. Why did you watch this? It's going to ruin the show for you. It was still funny as shit. Yeah. Because probably because <laughs> I've seen it so long ago, and it's yeah. like everything leaning up into it, right. but it was still funny as shit. Right. Like that whole scene <laughs> of a car like, no. <laughs> you can't do it. Don't do it. Oh, this <laughs> oh, is so good. I mean, he was talking about, um, he, he's right about, like, doctors, not, like, like, you know, the whole swapping body thing, but you try to explain your ailments to doctors, at least I know I have that problem here, um, that's why I hate going to the doctor, because they don't, um, you can explain it to them, they'll do, have you do a few bends and all that kind of jazz, go through x-rays, and then sometimes they still, remember how long it took them to find out, well, I went through all that stuff, x-rays, all these bend tests and stuff, and they said, like, I had arthritis in the neck, yeah. but I went through all this stuff, and they kept wanting me to come back to return appointments, and I'm like, dude, all that. And then they finally, after you go through all that, they're like, we got to send you to a specialist. And I finally got to a specialist like three weeks into it. She does like an x-ray and all that jazz. They send all the stuff over. Then she looks at it and says, yeah, you have arthritis in your neck. And mm -hmm. then she says, ibuprofen. I'm like, I've been doing that. I spent thousands of dollars for you guys to tell me something I already knew. Right. Um, Like to take ibuprofen. Right. And then do proper stretches. And it's like, Jesus Christ, our medical system sucks. Yeah. Jesus is, freaking yeah. Christ. And then, like, like I said, like the, my whole point is the doctor seemed doubtful there was anything wrong with me. I was yeah. like, dude, I didn't want to come to the doctor. 
Tay told me I needed to go to the doctor. Right. She kept saying you need to go to the doctor. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to come here. So why would I be making up stuff if I didn't want to come here? I'm not like a, you know, right? Like when I was loony people. So yeah, I get like if you can like somebody can like step into it and they actually can like feel your pain because it's only so much. And even um, the book I was reading, I've been I started reading recently in regards to, like pain and the sand. Like, I think it's called TMS or whatever because I'm fresh into it. So excuse me, like four pages into it. And one of the um, first few things they said is doctors, American medicine in general or Western medicine is what they say. They separate uh, the mental portion from the physical because you're taught, you're trained in school just to like, if you're not a psychologist or whatever it is, you're trained just to teach the physical, physical thing. Mm -hmm. So wrap this up, stitch this up, take these pills. That's how you're trained. And they go hand in hand though. Um, So usually if you have any type of ghost pain, especially with neck, back and that kind of stuff, a lot of stuff has been shown to be tied with like mental stuff. So stress and stuff, stress and all that jazz. But yeah. So like, that, it's funny because they always push Carl off like, dude, you're full of crap. But not really. I think yeah. they I think it, they just know it's funny. I think it's his presentation of yeah. it is what makes it like sound funny because he's just like, I don't know, just the way he says stuff, it's like goofy. But, yeah. you know, some of the stuff he says, you know, definitely makes sense. Yeah. You know? I always get exactly what he's saying. Yeah. <laughs> and, this, and I'll say it again. This is proof that they didn't ruin it for me because this is still just as fucking funny. Like, mm-hmm. it's still, seeing that scene, and then laying up to it, it still was funny. I didn't remember exactly what he said, but, like, when he said it, it's just like, that's Carl. Jesus yeah. Christ. It actually was a little better, since I know Carl's personality now. Yeah. It made the scene even funnier now. Since <laughs> I've seen it the first time, yeah. like, yeah, this is good. Yeah. I love the show. Good thing Tay is um, hanging out with me for this mm-hmm. one. Yeah. And then, guys, for only a couple dollars, you can get this young, beautiful girl. Off a of crack. Josh. Wait, what are you, you doing again? What I say earlier? Alcohol. I mean alcohol. She drinks. I'm on alcohol. She does a lot of things. <laughs> I'm don't kidding. Stop. Baby. You don't. Mm-hmm. All right. Guys, uh, make sure you guys are going to get a comments if you watch this long. Give Tay a big old welcome back. Um, and um, hopefully she we can work out the schedule where she's doing a lot more of these videos. Mm-hmm. And she can start checking out some of the Patreon exclusives with me as well. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, don't forget, guys, to go and subscribe to the Daily Motion. I am, uh, hopefully, you guys. Are, I don't really. I'm like, I'm, I'm very new to Daily Motion, so hopefully, you guys aren't getting like a ton of ridiculous notifications every time I upload. Because each day, I try to use the li- the small amount of uploads they give me to get some of the YouTube library over there. So, mm. hope you guys aren't getting too many notifications off of that. But yeah, um, that is all, guys. Hopefully, you guys are happy, safe, and healthy. Have any sweets? Nope. That is it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later. Bye.